when we would go to dinner, we would carry them like we were carrying suitcases of cash, and they would get their own seat at the table. Recording acoustic guitar is dear to my heart. Uh, it's a beautiful instrument, and there are so many types and kinds and constructions and different woods and different eras, and, and you can just do so much with an acoustic guitar, and it's just timeless, and it works in just about anything. I've spent decades trying to perfect recording acoustic guitar. And one of the tricks is they're all different. They're also different. Um, and, and obviously the touch and the way they're held and the person playing them makes a huge difference as well. But one of those driving forces for me to get better at acoustic guitar has been a man named Kenny Smith. And he and I and, and his wife have cut records together for over 20 years. We've made a lot for the Kenny and Amanda Smith band. Um, and we've had a lot of, a lot of stories and a lot of fun and a lot of tears and just become the best of friends. They're like family to us. And Kenny is a, the closest thing you'll get to a modern day legend uh, when it comes to acoustic guitar and flat picking. He's one of the best bluegrass has ever seen. And no doubt his legacy will go down in history. And years ago, we discussed cutting a solo record with him called Return. We really wanted that record to be extraordinary. And we brought in three very unique characters. And they were three very special acoustic guitars. The first acoustic guitar was one I've recorded many times. It was Kenny's 1935 D18. There weren't many made that year. And that guitar just sings in his hands it is part of the sound of Kenny. It's become that because it's so iconic. And I love that guitar and every time it's here, I just can't wait to hear it come across the speakers. And two of the other guitars were loaned to us by a kind man with an incredible collection. He's a broker. And these were very special and unique guitars. The first one was a 1935 Gibson Advanced Jumbo. It was a prototype. It was the only one made that year. And at the time, it was valued somewhere around three quarters of a million dollars. Today, it's likely double that. All of the current Gibson Advanced Jumbo reissues were made from scans that Gibson did of that very guitar. And the third guitar was a 1933 Martin D28 shaded top. And it ended up in Norman Blake's hands at some point, then in this collector's hands, and he loaned it to us to record on this album. That guitar is so special, and the provenance of it is incredible. So here we are, with millions of dollars of guitars in the studio, which is enough to freak out any studio owner. So needless to say, I got with Susan and said, hey, we need to check our policy about instruments in the studio. We need to make sure that there's plenty of coverage to cover all of this, just in case. When we would go to dinner, we would carry them like we were carrying suitcases of cash, and they would get their own seat at the table. Guitars are really important to Kenny. So important that on one record, the parking lot was filling up with smoke and the smoke started coming in the studio. We thought, oh no, there's something on fire around here. So we grabbed the guitars, grabbed Kenny, said, grab the hard drives, and we took off out the door, forgetting to grab his wife, Amanda. The good thing is, there was no fire. The fire department came out, they climbed the roof, they went everywhere. There was no fire anywhere to be found and the smoke cleared out. So we still, to this day, don't know how that happened or why. But the cool thing is, these guitars are captured. The vibrations of these guitars are on a recording. And now they can be enjoyed for many generations, no matter what happens.